Is that a, f there's lots we still don't know, but, it, but at this point, uh, when we look at what happened to the Malaysian Airlines jet, when we look at what happened to this Air Asia jet, can we begin to draw some conclusions about the safety standards, the speed at which these airlines have grown and expanded their service, and the increasingly bad safety record that we're beginning to see? Well, I think you can draw a little bit of conclusion there. Some of it is just bad luck, but part of it is when you have a concentration of risk because there's a lot more flights and a lot new entrants into the market, uh, bad things can happen, and that's an example of this situation. And a lot of it has to do with the infrastructure to protect the civil aviation, the training, and the uh, safety records of the overall civil aviation in the region. How difficult is it? We were talking about some of these numbers yesterday. Air Asia, for example, has 169 jets roughly uh, today. Six years ago, had 78 jets, so it's more than doubled in that space of time. How difficult is it for any airline, Air Asia or any other for that matter, to grow at that pace and maintain the necessary standards, find the competent pilots, the mechanics, etc., needed to keep the planes in the air and not in the sea? Well, I think they all can do it. They're not going to expand recklessly, but what happens is it can be a stress on the system, such as the air traffic control system, the monitoring of the weather, how they're going to change flight patterns. In the case of this particular flight, there, we know there was a flight change because of weather, but that should not have caused the crash. But that's going to lead to speculation in what caused this. Was, was it pilot error? Was it mechanical failure? And all of these factors play into the situation that companies have to know what airlines their travelers are flying on, what those safety records are, and what are the risks, because as you said, not everywhere in the world meets Western standards when it comes to civil aviation. Yeah, looking at the country as a whole, John, uh, Indonesia doesn't meet the FAA's standards for air traffic control, but there are other developing countries like India that also have an expanding middle class. They have a number of, of, of startup private uh, uh, airlines and are experiencing the same kind of boom in air travel. Uh, does it have to be this way? Does Indonesia have a particularly bad record, or is this just what happens in a developing economy? Well, I think it's a combination of both. Indonesia's overall civil aviation record is not that good. But you look at anywhere in the world that's rapidly expanding in emerging markets, and you have entrance into the market, someone has to be monitoring those entry airlines, especially small regional carriers that might have cut corners, and I'm not saying AirAsia did that, but we've seen this in other parts of the world. Somebody needs to be monitoring this, and this isn't readily available public information that any business traveler can go out and read up on. You have to have somebody monitoring the training records, the safety records, how they're addressing any potential security situation, safety situation, pilot training. Right. And if somebody's not monitoring all that, you're potentially putting all of your travelers at risk. Uh, I, I imagine. And, uh, y you know, John, I mean, as you say, I mean, it would be great for passengers to have that kind of information, but that information is not readily available even here uh, in the U.S. So, uh, you know, that leads, though, to the question not just about the expansion and the maintenance of this aircraft, but really also about the pilot training. I mean, uh, what I'm reading about now about AirAsia is that uh, many of these pilots had lots of complaints about their own aircraft. They were not addressed. I don't know if that's part of the problem here with AirAsia. But what about the training in some of these countries? Well, that's a huge issue. If you look at a lot of the past events that were really negative, where there were crashes, what you have is often it's pilot error. Uh, such as the Adams Air Flight, which was in 2007, almost the exact same routing as this flight, also had a weather situation, but the weather did not cause the crash. The pilots did. So you have to look at the pilot training, the experience, and you have to have a company like ours that monitors every airline in the world and these safety records because, as you said, it's not readily available information to the general public.